Okay, this is grade seven uh, homework over the long weekend. This was nine questions, all of them algebraic. The first three questions are one step algebraic questions, and the last six questions were two step algebraic equations. So, what we mean by a one step algebraic equation in this first question right here? In the first question, we have x minus one equals negative two. It's a one step algebraic equation because it only has a constant, there is no coefficient in front of that x which means if I work towards isolating the variable or getting x by itself, I only have to get rid of one thing, and that's the constant. And for all of these questions, I'm going to get rid of the things I don't want by using what we call opposite operations, okay? So x minus 1 equals negative 2. I want to get rid of the minus 1, and I know the opposite of that is to add 1. So I add 1 to both sides. That creates a zero pair. And with x equals the sum of two negatives and one positive. That's our integer sets. If you combine two negatives with one positive, you would have negative one as an answer. Circle your answer. Now, if this was a test, you would then go back to your original equation of x minus one equals negative two, and you would substitute negative one for your x. And when you substitute, you should use brackets. So is negative one take away another one Negative 2, it is. So therefore, using substitution and simplification, I figure out that my answer is right. So x minus 1 equals negative 2. The value of x is negative 1. In the second question, we have a constant. But this time, it's a little bit different. Because usually, we have variable, and then we have a constant, and then we have an equal expression on the other side. But in the second question, our constant is first, and our variable is second. And really, that doesn't matter. So if I thought about this question, it could be 4 plus an x equals 3. But if I was to erase that x and put it over here, instead, it goes from being x plus 4 to, or 4 plus x to x plus 4 equals 3. They're the same things. No matter which way I write it, I have my constant as 4 and my variable is x with no coefficient. So... Knowing that those two things are the same thing, I'm still going to use opposite operation. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides, okay? And I'm going to create a 0 pair. I'm going to be left with x. And over here, I have the sum of a 3 and a negative 4. Three, 3 positives and 4 negatives make negative 1 again. So my answer for the second question is also negative 1. Question three is different than question one and two because it's still a one-step equation. I still have a constant. I still have a variable. There's no coefficient. But this time, my coefficient and my variable are on the right-hand side. And it doesn't matter. If I thought about what this looks like, it would look something like this. And if it looks like this, here we see that our constant is right here, our negative two, and our variable is over here, one. If I put my variable over here instead and my constant behind it, this turns into... 10 equals x minus 2, right? So that would be the exact same equation as the one in black. Or if I wanted to do it, oh, that's not what I wanted to do. Hang on a second. Smaller eraser. There's our smaller eraser. Or I could even think of it like this. I could take my, I could take my variable and my coefficient, and I could go it over, put it over here, and I could take my 10 and put it over here. No, I'm going to slide you over here. And I take this and put it down here. That's not. That's actually nothing. Why is that? Hey, get out of there. Hey, you, get out of there. Okay. So now what I would have is I would have negative 2. Oh, that's the wrong color. Negative 2 plus x equals 10. Or again, if I switch those around, I could still have x minus 2 equals 10 as well. But that's not what we're doing. We're keeping it the way it is. So in this case here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add 2 to both sides because I want to get rid of that negative 2 constant. So I'm adding 2 to isolate x. x is now by itself. And over here, I have the sum of 10 and 2. That's a grade 1 question. That's 12. So I can read that as 12 is x or x is 12. 12 has a value of x or 12 is the value of x. In the third question, to the end, we have two steps. So in these questions, we have both a coefficient our 2, and a constant, our minus 10. And when we have both in our equation, we have to do two steps to isolate the variable. But we do it in reverse order of operations. So in, in regular bed mass, we would do multiplication division first, 
and then we would do addition and subtraction. But when we're isolating for variables, we reverse that. So we would do the addition subtraction first, which means we get rid of our constant first. So since our constant is minus 10, I'm going to add 10 to both sides to get rid of it. Now I have 2x equals 18. So I've gone from two steps to one step. I now have just a coefficient. This says 2 multiplied by x, or x multiplied by 2. The opposite of multiplication is division. And if I think about that, if I had two x's and I divided them into two groups, I would have one in each group. And if I had 18 and divided them into two groups, I have 9 in both. And each of these would say x equals 9. Right? But numerically speaking, I divide both sides by 2 to get x. If you have two x's and you divide it into two groups, you get an x. If you had 18 and divide it into two groups, you get 9. So in the fourth question, x equals 9. Now in the fifth question, again, we just like the last one, we put our constant first and our variable coefficient second, but it doesn't matter. We know that my constant is 6 and my coefficient is 4. So the first thing I'm going to do is subtract 6 from both sides to get rid of your constant. When you get rid of your constant, you'll be left with 4x equals 30 positives and 6 negatives. If you had 30 positives and 6 negatives, you'd have 24 positives. Now I've gone from a two-step equation down to a one-step. Here I'm going to divide both sides by my coefficient, 4. Instead of having 4x's, I'm going to have x. That's 24 divided by 2. Well, 24 divided by 2 is 12. Divided by 2 again is 6. So 20 divided by 4 is 6. So x would equal 6. In my sixth question, again, this time my variable and my coefficient are on the other side of the equation. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what side it's on. As long as you isolate from that side, you're fine. My constant is negative 22. My coefficient is positive 5. So the first thing I'm going to do is add 22 to both sides to get rid of the constant, create a zero pair. I now have 5x is equal to the sum. When I combine two negatives with 22 positives, I would end up with 20 positives. Now I have just a coefficient, so I'm going to divide 5x is divided into five groups is 1x. 20 divided into five groups is 4. My final solution is x equals 4. Okay. In questions 7, 8, and 9, we have fractional coefficients. So if I said to you 5x versus x over 5, the coefficient in one of them is 5, but the coefficient in the other is not. This is a coefficient of 5 because there are 5 x's. In this one, we have our x, but we don't have all of it. We have what we call a fifth of x. A fifth of x. So really, the coefficient in x is really a fifth, or 0.2x, because we know that a fifth as a decimal is decimal 2. So on a test, I like to ask the question, in this expression, is the coefficient 5? And the answer is no, it's not. The coefficient is decimal 2, or 1 fifth. So there's a difference between the two. And because there is, in this seventh question, you have a fifth of x plus 2 equals 10. Your constant is plus 2, so the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of it. I now have a fifth of x is equal to the sum of these, which is positive 8. So if you think about that, a fifth of what number is 8? What number would you divide by 5 to get 8? Well, that's called solving by inspection. But if I have a fifth of it, if I was to multiply that by 5 and multiply that by 5, so once I multiply a fifth of a number by 5, you'd have 5 of them. So 5 fifths equal all of it. So instead of having a fifth of x, if you multiply it by 5, you have x. And over here, you would have 40. So x equals 40. Double check your answer in this one by substituting. So if I take my equation of x over 5 plus 2 equals, what was the question again? x over 5 plus 2 equals 10, is that right? If I substitute my x, substitute my x for 40, and solve it, 40 divided by 5 is 8, 8 plus 2 is 10, so then I know my solution is correct. Okay. There we go. Uh, question number 8, it says 10, my constant's here, 
and my coefficient is a tenth of x, or 0.1x. Really, we don't have all of x, we have a tenth of x. If I was to draw that, there's my x, but I would have it broken up into 10 parts. That would be a tenth of x. So a tenth of 10 plus a tenth of x is equal to 20. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of my constant, which is this. I now have a tenth of a number is equal to 20 positives and 10 negatives make 10. So what number divided by 10 is 10? It's 100 by inspection. But I'm going to multiply, use the opposite of dividing by 10, and I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. So if I had a tenth of x and I made 10 of them, I would have all of x. And 10 multiplied by 10, I almost put down 20. 10 multiplied by 10 is 100. So x equals 100. And in your last question, just like the pre two previous, my constant is here, and my coefficient is a third of x, or 0 decimal 3 repeating of x, right? So my coefficient is, I don't have all of x, I have a third of it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get rid of my constant, which is minus 1, and I'm going to add 1 to both sides. A third of x is equal to 6. So a third of x, if I triple a third of x, I'll have x. And if I tripled one side, I have to triple the other. I'm going to end up with my solution x equals 18, or 18 is x.